CERN fires up their Large Hadron Collider, as some believe that this is an opening to another dimension, or even the bottomless pit mentioned in Revelation, the ninth chapter. And we take a look at the Georgia Guidestones, as they have been torn down after a recent bombing left them decimated. Stay with us as we look at these and other stories on the 511 News Welcome back to the 511 News. I'm your host, Chad Davidson of Good Fight Ministries. And on today's episode, we're going to be looking at CERN. I know this is a topic that we at Good Fight Ministries have gotten a number of emails concerning who CERN is and really what's going on there in Switzerland, as well as the Georgia Guidestones. Both of these things are very hot topics, specifically when we detail prophetic timelines and where people believe we are on the prophetic clock and what these things might actually have to do with what happens in the end times and specifically the book of Revelation. And so we want to talk about that, but always bring it back to a biblical understanding because what we don't want to do is go too wild and too crazy with every single thing that you might read or find on the internet but we also do not want to demean the very things that are concerning regarding CERN and regarding the Georgia Guidestones when we really look into them and see some of the stuff behind it, some of the mysterious and weird stuff. We have to be open and understand that some of this stuff is weird, but we also don't want to do the famous pendulum swinging where all of a sudden we are on one side or the other. And I want to show you when we get there a little bit later as to some of the pendulum singing and where that actually could go prophetically in a way that you might not be looking at right now. But nonetheless, CERN recently fired up on July 5th, and when they did, when they fired up their Large Hadron Collider, a lot of different videos were being made before that took place because people were wondering exactly what was going to happen on July 5th. In fact, there were a number of videos done by prophecy experts, so to speak, or different channels right here on YouTube, if you're watching this on YouTube. And some of them say some pretty concerning things, specifically one video that actually talks about maybe what they're doing there is actually opening up the bottomless pit mentioned in Revelation, the ninth chapter. So I want to read from Revelation chapter 9 because it is so important for us to get a better understanding of what's going on that if people are going to make such claims, let's see what exactly they might mean. So when you get to Revelation chapter 9, you're going to be you're going to be seeing right away that we are at the fifth trumpet judgment in Revelation chapter 9. In Revelation chapter 8, we get the last seal and then the previous four trumpet judgments, and that's going to come into play as to what I believe is really going on there on July 5th and what took place at CERN and whether or not it relates to what's going on here in Revelation chapter 9. But nonetheless, let's read from Revelation 9 because it is important that we get a biblical understanding regarding any event that might happen. Revelation 9 verse 1, Then the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star from heaven which had fallen to the earth. And the key of the bottomless pit was given to him, a fallen star that is a him. That is important to recognize that there we're dealing with a fallen star that is a him. He opened the bottomless pit and smoke went up out of the pit like the smoke of a great furnace and the sun and the air were darkened by the smoke of the pit. Then out of the smoke came locust upon the earth and power was given them. As the scorpions of the earth have power, they were told not to hurt the grass of the earth, nor any green thing, nor any tree, but only the men who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads, and they were not permitted to kill anyone but to torment for five months, and their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it stings a man. And in those days, men will seek death and will not find it. They will long to die, and death flees from them. Now, when we're reading that, first and foremost, that is radical. <laughs> I mean, 
when you think about this and this trumpet judgment that's taking place right here and you think about people begging to die and being unable to die and only those with the seal of God upon them that are going to be safe from these tormentors, we need to recognize, wow, that is pretty incredible. That is an incredible judgment. But is this something, and guys, this is where we need to make sure that our understanding of biblical prophecy and events and everything that's going to take place, that we do it with saying, I'm not going to allow the newspapers to dictate what I believe about the Bible, but I'm going to let the Bible dictate what I believe about the newspapers. Because if you believe that July 5th, and there were plenty of people predicting that July 5th, this bottomless pit was being opened up, this dimension, and and I noticed that with some of the uh, free thinking videos, we'll call them, that were being posted online regarding biblical prophecy and, and making the claim that that's what's going on there at CERN on July 5th, and they were using terminology that I was very uncomfortable with because you would see them talk about these other dimensions that were about to be opened up. And in these dimensions, now demons were going to come out of those dimensions rather than dealing with what the text says. And it's interesting because this abuso that is talked about here in Revelation chapter 9 is also talked about by legion, the very demons that are inside the demoniac at the tomb in Luke chapter 8, when they're concerned that Jesus was going to throw them back into the abuso, into the abyss, into this bottomless pit, and so forth. So it's not the only time we see this. In fact, I believe the word is used at least nine times in the New Testament. But Revelation chapter 9 and Luke chapter 8 are two of the places where it is used. And nonetheless, it does deal with demonic entities. It is something that is real. Obviously, we believe what the scriptures teach. But the problem is, if you think that July 5th, that this pit was being opened up when CERN turned on their large Hadron Collider, I think you're going to deal with a big problem if you simply just read the previous chapter in Revelation. Because if you think that this bottomless pit was being opened up on July 5th because CERN was doing that, then you're running right in conflict with the understanding that the previous four judgments did not take place, guys. And I want to to read from Revelation 8 so you can get somewhat of a synopsis here. Because what we have is the seventh seal in verse 1. The Lamb broke the seventh seal. There was silence in heaven for about a half hour. And I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and the seven trumpets were given them. And another angel came and stood at the altar holding a golden censer, and much incense was given to him, so that he might add to it the prayers of all the saints on the golden altar which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense ascended from the angel's hand with the prayers of the saints before God. Then the angel took the censer and filled it with the fire of the altar and hurled it to the earth. And there were peals of thunder and sounds and flashes of lightning and an earthquake. Guys, these are crazy events taking place. I don't know if you missed them before we got to this bottomless pit being open in CERN, but I didn't see these things happen. But here's verse 6. And seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound them. The first sounded, and there was hail and fire mixed with blood. And it was hurled to earth, and a third of the earth was burned up, and a third of the trees were burned up, and all the green grass was burned up. Guys, I don't remember that happening anytime recently. Let's see about the second angel. The second angel sat in something like a great mountain burning with fire was hurled into the sea, and a third of the sea became blood, and a third of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. Guys, I didn't see that happen. The next one, and a third angel sounded, and a great star fell from heaven, burning like a torch, and it fell on a third of the rivers and on a spring of the waters. The star's name is Wormwood, and a third of the waters became Wormwood, and many people died from the waters because they were made bitter. Once again, this is not an event that we've seen take place. The fourth angel sounded, and a third of the sun, a third of the moon, and a third of the stars were struck so that a third of them would be darkened, and the day would not shine for a third of it, and the night in the same way. Then I look, and I heard an eagle flying in mid-heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to those who live on the earth, because of the remaining blasts of the trumpet of the three angels who are about to sound. Now, here's why I bring all that up. 
Because if you think the bottomless pit is now being opened up by CERN, and this happened or started to happen back on July 5th, there's a big problem. Because when we read the book of Revelation, and I want to give you a little insight, I do believe in a, a recapitulation when it comes to the seals, bowls, and trumpets judgments. And when we're looking at this one specifically, and we're just dealing with the trumpets here, because I think that's important in dealing with understanding the bottomless pit here and what takes place, because the woe is to the people that are on earth at this time, and it's, hey, these things have happened, it's about to get worse. So if I thought that was actually taking place, and now all of a sudden there are going to be demons coming from other dimensions, and I'm telling you right now, I am quoting from videos that are very popular online regarding July 5th and regarding the CERN doing their testing most recently. And guys, it is really important that we recognize that people are doing some bait and switches sometimes with these videos where they call something a different dimension. When we're seeing quite clearly, we're talking specifically when it comes to what the Bible says, this abyss, this bottomless pit, and, and we want to make sure once again that we don't say, oh, where does the thing that CERN is doing now line up with what my Bible says? Because that is so dangerous, and I believe that's how we get things like post-millennial thought. Because when it comes to post-millennial viewpoints of looking at the scripture, a lot of times the amount of followers that have believed in the post-mill viewpoint has to do with what has happened in the news. Thing like Things like the world wars have ended a lot of the ideas of post-millennial thought, but now it is back at the forefront, and a ton of people are following hook, line, and sinker into this mentality that we are going to build the kingdom of heaven here on earth, and once everyone becomes a Christian, then Jesus will come and rule and reign. Places like Bethel, and a lot of you may know some of their dominionist theology and so forth, or Lance Wall now and some of these false teachers, but also some of our more Calvinistic-leaning teachers who believe in theonomy or who do believe in a post-mill understanding of the scriptures, specifically when it comes to the book of Revelation and so forth, but have more of a dominionist understanding of us taking over those roles in government. Many of them do as well. And, and we have to understand and always come back to the place that we say, we do not allow the news and the headlines to dictate what we see so clearly in scripture, specifically if you read Revelation 20, right after reading Revelation 1 through 19, and understanding there is a millennial period, and not just simply allegorizing everything that you read, but making sure that when we read Scripture, we allegorize the things that are actually an allegory. But nonetheless, this is important, and I, and I bring that up, and I, and I want to, uh, hopefully, for those who are watching these videos, to consider it. Does that mean I think that CERN, the people at CERN, are good-hearted, nice people. I don't believe that is necessarily 100% the truth. And I would say that the fact that they do have a giant statue of Shiva out front of them and their logo, without a doubt, does look like a number of sixes involved in the logo, it seems that at best they are, I guess, ignorant of those things. And yet, I do believe that they are right alongside as, and I understand they're, they're supposed to be a, a nuclear research organization and, and all of that, but I do believe when you see those symbols and signs and so forth, uh, it, it is very interesting, like, why is this going on? Do I think that there are some evil people involved? Absolutely, no, no doubt about it. But when we're just specifically talking about CERN, and whether or not this July 5th date is the bottomless pit. I think that Scripture is beyond clear on this. I believe that the book of Revelation is beyond clear that there are many events that need to take place before that bottomless pit opens up. And I believe that when it comes to this abyss being opened, when it comes to this bottomless pit being opened, to think that it is CERN who has the control to do that, I think that gets us away from the sovereignty of God. I think it really gets us away from understanding God's sovereignty over this, over everything, and having your concerns that maybe they're going to be a black hole that they start that swallows up our universe, that's just not biblical. 
We, we need to recognize that it is God himself that holds all things together. Jesus Christ, according to the book of Colossians, is the one who holds all things together. So when it comes to whatever is going around, think about how minuscule we are on, on this planet Earth and how with the sun and, and everything that, that is in this universe that we are in and that we could think that, oh no, a few human beings could get together and they could decide to make a black hole that ends everything. Guys, I don't think that that is at all, at all conceivable for people that understand how powerful our God is. Uh, a people that understand that Jesus himself holds all things together, that ultimately there comes a time that if it wasn't for Jesus's return, then yes, there'd be no flesh left because people are that evil and are that wicked. And we do recognize that the wrath of God is going to be poured out. But ultimately, we cannot look at these things that CERN may be doing and say, we know that they're doing this, they're opening dimensions, there's going to be portals, and then they're going to be able to put demons forth and, and whatever. Recognize the sovereignty of God and that he is ultimately the one who watches over this. But that's not the only thing I've heard in terms of argumentations for what CERN did on July 5th. In fact, some people have even looked at what took place just recently with the Georgia Guidestones and the fact that they were actually bombed. They were vandalized and then demolished in Georgia. And I want to go over a little bit of the history there because it is an interesting history when it comes to these guidelines. And I want to read for you not only what the guidelines are and so forth, but get a little background on really what it is because a lot of people have no idea what it is. In fact, there are a ton of different people that say this is what this is, it means this, and so forth. And the Georgia Guidestones are, if you just read them, are a paganistic, wicked thing. If we're just being honest, we recognize that this is could be Satan worship, it could be simply the worship of nature, and so forth, eugenics is involved, and I want to read for you because this thing is massive. Well, they were before it was torn down recently. But when we look at it, yes, without a doubt, it looks like it is an homage to some human reasoning that involve also the planetary, you know, nature of movements and astronomical, you know, whatever nonsense that they're doing while they're obeying nature. <laughs> Is, is what it looks like. But all of these guidestones, and I, and I want to give you some of the viewpoints that some people believe. Some people believe that these guidestones, and I want to read from the 10 basic inscription and commandments that they have on them in all of the different languages. Obviously, I'm only going to read them in English, but I want to read those to you. But I want to give some of the philosophy behind or some of the people that have investigated say, okay, what on earth does this have to do with anything? Because these guidestones have been there since 19. 80. And in fact, everything was done anonymously. Somebody who claimed to the, the pseudonym that they used for it was R.C. Christian. And now some people have argued that R.C. stands for Rosicrucian Christian, right? The weirdo group that Walt Disney was a part of as well, an occultic group. But nonetheless, they have a lot of different views and what might have been and who all put it there. But a number of people put these guidestones together using the granite from local quarries in Georgia. And this thing is massive. Tons and tons and tons of weight put in exactly the right places so that when the sun beams in certain ways at certain times, it goes right through holes and all of this stuff. And yet these are some of the commands that are on them. And these commands, as some people believe, are a guideline for a civilization to go forward when it comes to maybe they were thinking it's 1980 around the time of the Cold War. Maybe they think it's going to get bombed and there's going to be a ton of nuclear war and people are going to die. And this could be the new civilization. And these will be the Ten Commandments of the civilization. That's one theory. Another one is they're Rosicrucians. Uh, they're satanic. And these are the commands that they want and eventually what will put forth. Depopulation has been a popular talk, talking point at a lot of different talks and so forth, whether it's Bill Gates or otherwise. Depopulation has been very, very popular. So the first of these things is maintain humanity under 500 million in perpetual balance 
with nature. Now, that, I believe, the first and the last commandment are important to one another, but we'll get to them. So you maintain the humanity under 500 million. So that means most of the world needs to die, okay? Guide reproduction wisely, improving fitness and diversity. So now we're dealing with eugenics, making sure that people are fit and diverse. Unite humanity with a living new language. So building back the Tower of Babel. Rule passion, faith, tradition, and all things with tempered reason. So temper your faith in line of all of these things. Protect people and nations with fair laws and just courts. That sounds fine. Let all nations rule internally, resolving external disputes in a world court. A one world government. That's interesting. Avoid petty laws and useless officials. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. Balance personal rights with social duties. Prize truth, beauty, love, seeking harmony with the infinite. New Age mumbo gumbo. And number 10, be not a cancer on the earth. Leave room for nature. Leave room for nature. And now the Georgia Guide Zones have these four, I guess you would say, these four upstanding pillars. And on each side of those, are eight, because there's four, there's eight different languages, English, Spanish, Swahili, Hindi, Hebrew, Arabic, traditional Chinese, and Russian. And on the top, there's some uh, hieroglyphics, there's also some Babylonian uh, and Sanskrit and Greek up at the top. But nonetheless, this thing has just boggled the minds of so many people for so many years. And there has been a number of different views. I believe Mark Dice had said that the same people who put this together actually wrote something and gave it a book out to Congress, and that thing was satanic and, and so forth. And uh, in, in all honesty, the thing seems very, very strange. And the fact that it was put there and has been watched over, they put cameras up there, and now it has been bombed. It has been torn down. And it's interesting because there's a time capsule, supposedly six feet underneath of it, that read, hey, this is supposed to be opened at this date, but never left a date. But nonetheless, this is what's going on. These are the things that are up there. And this thing has a lot of mystery to it or had a lot of mystery to it in terms of it not actually being standing anymore. But when we talked about the pendulum swinging, this is something that I, I, I really want to point out as a danger. Obviously, those 10 whatever rules and guidelines and so forth those are not biblical guidelines. They're not of the objective truth of the Word of God, and they're completely off in so many different ways, and and it's it's just absolutely ridiculous. It's weird that this giant monument is has been standing there. But there is a pendulum swing in, and I want to mention it here because I think Candace Ta Taylor, the gubernational candidate there in Georgia, did an ad, and in that ad, you're going to hear her say something, and this is the pendulum swing that I want to bring about as a cautionary tale of what it looks like when dominionist, and notice the words that she used, get their hands on things and how it puts people who care of about a biblical truth in a juxtaposition against those who would be, you know, crazy to want to follow these guidelines, and then all the way over to the other side where we need to gain dominion over everything. Why are you doing this? If we don't call things out and we don't acknowledge them and we don't take authority, and take dominion over what God's given us, then we are no better than the evil ones that put it up. Notice that what Candace has said there, being a self-proclaimed Christian, is that we, if we don't take dominion over this, we are no different than those who erected it. Now, to say that someone who doesn't take dominion over every part of the land and therefore completely control it with whatever governmental system to say they are the same person. If you don't do that and are not a part of obtaining this dominion, you are now part of the evil people who erected this satanic thing that she's talking about. Now, guys, that is the pendulum swing that we need to keep our eyes on. We've talked about this a number of times on the show. I am far more concerned about the great falling away. Those are people falling away from the faith, the great apostasy. I am far more concerned about those who apostatize than I am concerned in terms of that apostasy 
in the end times, as it talks about in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, than I am for those who are never saved in the first place. My concern is that people wouldn't go to this and then think that we go up in arms and start taking dominion by force. That is a major, major danger that we need to watch out for, point out, and say that is a false teaching as well. If you want to win, you win with the gospel of Jesus Christ, with new hearts dedicated to the word of God. That doesn't mean we aren't the salt of the earth. That doesn't mean, oh, I just put my hands up and so forth. I don't vote and, or whatever it may be. But we need to be careful that people like this, that people that are pushing this dominionist stuff, that we're not a part of that either. That we say, wait a second, I'm not a part of that agenda either. And I don't want anything that has to do with taking dominion over people and thinking that that's going to be my evangelism once I get control of the seven spheres of, of, of influence on the earth and basically we control Babylon or whatever nonsense that people think that you're going to be able to do here on earth when that is not at all what the Bible describes. That is not at all what it looks like when it comes to the end times. And we need to recognize that and say, no, we need to point that out as false teaching as well. So this pendulum swing, and, and it puts people in a juxtaposition, and I'm telling you, that's where you're going to be biblically. If you say, this is wrong over here, and so is this, it puts you in a place where a lot of times you're going to feel lonely. And it can be a very lonely road. But the truth is, is that truth is what matters. Following Jesus is is what matters. I don't believe that we're going to be taking dominion over anyone, and I don't believe that if you're not a part of taking dominion over these things, that you're just as evil as the people that put up these statues and so forth. So guys, I want to encourage you, make sure you're clinging to Jesus when it comes to CERN, when it comes to the Georgia Guidestones, when it comes to any of these things, make sure you know the Word of God and the one who wrote it, because all of these things are going to pass away. The Georgia Guidestones, CERN, and all of it. doesn't matter how much they study theoretical physics. It doesn't matter the Higgs bosom or any of it, because all of it is ultimately going to be burnt up. And for those who love Jesus, they're going to be with him forever and ever and ever. And those who do not, specifically, I, know, I believe in Revelation 21.8 when it mentions the cowardly, it's for those who turn away who are cowardice when these things come, for those who turn away, guys, we need to make sure that we are not of them, but we are of those who stick to Jesus and are with him forever and ever. And he tells us, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter in to the joy of the Lord. And just a quick announcement, guys, for those who love the 511 News Show, we are coming out, the Good Fight Ministries team, not all of the team, but some of the team and some of the local uh, youth here are going to be coming out, our youth leaders here are going to be coming out to Pennsylvania August 15th through the 19th. We'll put a link in the description. We have a video for you guys to check out. We'd love to have as many people as possible come, young people ages 14 to 19, to be involved at our youth camp coming to Pennsylvania. You guys are welcome. And guess what? If you don't know Jesus, turn to him right now. Trust in him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love him with all your heart, soul, mind, mind and strength. And anybody who will come to him, he will not cast away. This has been Chad Davidson, and this is the 511 News.